Today we're going to be looking at the contemporary artist Robin Mead and we're going to be creating our own landscapes. And what we're going to be doing is taking a paper, we're going to fold it and be able to have something that is our in the front, so our foreground, um, a design in the middle ground, which is in the middle, and another design in the background. So we're really going to dive into looking about space and how we can use that in our art as well as creating color and using line the same way that contemporary artist uh, Robin Mead does in most of her landscapes. So what we're going to start off with first is we're going to take a look at this packet here that I'm going to give each of us and we're going to look at what can we learn about space. So I want to look at this. I'm going to minimize this here a little bit more so we can take a look at it all in one screen. So what is space? It's something that is a visual and physical space in an artwork, but the artist can create it in a variety of ways. So looking at this first one here, drawing big. How neat is that to think that a person is squashed inside of this box here? right? So that you can see that they're really big, but they're in a tight little space. And another idea, you can think of the space in using your entire paper to tell an entire scene. So a photographer taking a picture of the entire landscape, that's what you can notice here. It's lines off the paper. So think about when, you know, we, once we did, um, and back in first grade, we did our Georgia O'Keeffe's and we really zoomed in. So like a photographer zooms in on say a bee or a tiny insect and you can see all those details. You don't have to show everything for your viewers to know what you created. So that's what this is, is lines off the paper. So you can zoom in a lot when you're using space. The other thing is to think about placement with a horizon line. So you can notice that the horizon line is way up here. And what that does is it allows us to have all of this for our ocean, for our, our lake, whatever it is, that you can see all of these boats. Now, if I put my horizon line down lower, I can't fit as, as many boats, and then my sun is larger, or I need to do something in my background. So I can see in this picture here that it's more about what I'm looking at than, um, you know, seeing, say, um, just, I don't know, the sky. Like I think I see the artist is more focused on, Hey, this person in this awesome scene versus just the sunset, smaller things in the distance and larger up close. So we've talked about that too. And we've done that in uh, previous projects, but anything that is larger, like looking at your hand, if you look at it right now, in front of you, you can notice all those lines at the palm of your hand. You can see all those really details, those wrinkles, whatever you've got. But if you see a friend across the room who puts their hand up in the air, you're not gonna see those lines as much. They're kind of fuzzy, they're not as detailed. You might see some, you can see the hand, but it's not um, like it's right in front of you. So that's what this is, is things that are in front of you are gonna be really detailed, just like this says, darker close up and lighter further away and things that are smaller in the background are not as detail oriented, right? So another thing I always said is if there's a water bottle way in the back of the room, it's going to look a lot smaller as if you could just pick it up with your pinky, like the size of your pinky, versus when the water bottle's right in front of you, you'll notice that it's really big, right? Um, we've also talked about overlapping is when you put something in front of another. So here you don't have to draw the whole face. You can have things in front of each other. And finally, you know, what I like about this is it breaks it down into simple. So foreground front, it's right in front of you. Look at the bird and all the details. The middle ground is that middle space. What's kind of in between um, your important subject and what's, you know, in between the sky. And the background is the far away. So you can notice on here, you've got the mountains, you've got the clouds, and you also have the sun. And there's tons of little tiny trees that are just, you know, upside down Vs or little mountain things. So that's what I want us to kind of think about and review about what is space. 
So at this time in our packet, you'll notice I have a page. And I just want this to be our brain warm up today. I want you to use this design here and add in whatever it is that you care or want to think about. So here's a house. Here's your horizon line because this is the ground and this is the sky. But if you want the sky to be way up high, then draw your horizon line like a new one across a little different or keep this. So I've offered that, you know, you can do UFOs in the background, picking up whatever you want. Um, you can have big pumpkins and things in the front, uh, whatever it is that makes you excited. So big in the front, you know, kind of in the middle, in the middle and tiny and small in the back. So take this time for the next five minutes and just quickly sketch some ideas and just wake up your mind playing with foreground, middle ground, and background. look at our artist today. So Robin Mead. And just take a look at some of her work that I have shown on this slide. You can see that she uses a lot of thick lines and she doesn't use a lot, lot of detail, but just enough to tell the story and to make her pictures really pop and come off the page in a fun, inviting way. She uses color as you can see, like even in this top picture up here, you can see the blues and the greens that she's using. As well as over here, we have the night sky and she left some areas white, but she added in lots of pops of color. So in her, you know, landscape that she has, she's got those trees or foliage that are right here in the front. And then on this one, you can see in the middle ground, she's got her mountains. And in the background, she's got her moon or the sun and the star. So typically if it's a shooting star in the back, if we're following our space rules is it would be really small, but that's the nice part about as an artist, you get to make these calls and you get to choose how you want to add in and what you want to add in for your features. So looking at this one, the foreground I'd say are the waves, the middle ground are, you know, the foliage and then the back and part of those mountains. And then the background is just that color, or you could have the mountains and the color of the sunset be the background. 
So think about each area. These are the largest here, and then the middle ground and the background. So let's look at her website and learn a little bit about her. So her designs, as she says, is she was a social worker in the past and she loved what she did, but she knew she couldn't do it for 30 plus years. So what she ended up doing was taking some art classes and using, you know, really being captured by bold watercolors and mixed media where she'd experiment with color. And she'd also really enjoyed creating, as she says, depictions of nature, the ocean, landscapes, flowers, and birds. So she just would put that out into whatever she creates. So what stood out for me is as a social worker, she said she learned how to express the joy that comes with creating. And she said it took a long time for her to even find that about herself. And she wanted to really dive into that and learn about bringing joy into herself through her art. So she went into art school later and just found that she, they sold their home in New York and they moved out um, to Georgia and got downsized, as she says, in 2013. And this allowed her to really focus on her art and also have a small farm-like property with chickens, landscapes, and as she says, the most wonderful neighbors. So when you look at her art, she doesn't have it where it's extremely expensive. She has it where it's affordable. She makes, you know, hand-painted paper that she sells. Um, she has prints and mandalas and stickers, you name it. So you can see like the different sizings of some of her different pieces um, when you click on it and open it up and how you can buy prints and be able to afford her artwork, which is fantastic. Her original art, is something that you can always come back at and look right and see so you can see some of her larger designs but then also a lot of her different smaller pieces so her other example i don't know if it'll let me open this was a nine by six so it doesn't have to be large they're you know smaller pieces but they really hold such beautiful vibrant colors and designs then are affordable for anybody so let's go back into what we're going to create. And I want you to find your joy in what you're going to make today. So in this video, this is the sample that I'm going to make. I've got the foreground of my um, fence. I have my pumpkins and a different design in my middle ground. And in my background is the night sky and the bats and a few more pumpkins. So think about that as we go to create ours today. For our project today, we're going to be creating a layered landscape. So you'll notice I have a piece of paper that I can open into a larger piece. And it's all going to be interconnected in creating a design. Now this one's just blank, but I wanted to show you what we're going to do is take a large paper and we're going to draw our um, landscape uh, on here. So I'll flip it over this way to make it a little bit easier for us. So we're going to fold our paper into thirds. So one section, two, and three, right? You'll be able to see your folds on the paper. And what we're going to do is have this be our background. Things that are way in the back and it's going to be the tallest. And then I will make sure that I start a line a little bit lower and I'm going to draw a type of a line and then I'm going to draw down my fold here because you can see this is the fold and have my middle ground. And for my front, my foreground, I will create a different type of a line. So bumpy lines, wavy lines, whatever you want. And then we'll end up cutting all this other space away. So that's what we're gonna be working on on our piece. So when we go to draw inside of it, we'll be able to have all of our details in the foreground, details in the middle ground, and finally the details in the background. All right, so now that I've shown you kind of what we're going to be doing, I want you to practice on your page. 
for the back of your packet or in your sketchbook what you're considering making for yours as well. So here, all I'm going to do is draw two lines, one from my foreground and one from my middle ground. So I, for my foreground, I'm gonna keep it nice and low and I might make it this way, right? I'm gonna go up to the top up here and then I'm going to make my mountainscape for my lines this way so you can see that and I'm going to go draw on my crease or my line again and this way I know what I need to cut so I'm going to have my background way in the back of this is going to be here my mountains are my middle ground and my foliage if I was copying the Robin Mead concept would be down here so then when I would take my scissors, I would cut off this area and this area. So when we go to close it, I see the front, the middle page, and the back page. So that's what I'm looking for on this part. Now that you've created or seen how I created the other versions, what I want you to try to do is draw what you think you want in your foreground, middle ground, and your background. So here was my example that I started thinking of, okay, I want to do, you know, a fall theme or a Halloween theme because at this time when I'm doing this project, it's around that time. And so what I'm going to consider is drawing the fence in the middle ground, I'll have my pumpkins. And then in the background, I have some bats, maybe a spider web kind of coming over it. And I could add even more details into that. This was just a basic part. So when I came up with that idea on my paper, I drew my two lines. And then all I did was just take out, um, thinking of what do I want to do? I want this to be my fence. So I'm only going to draw the top of my fence line here as you can see like this and then I'm going to draw going up on my crease that I created and here I'm just going to do some waves and these will be my pumpkins so maybe I'll have a couple of them you never know and then I'm going to draw all the way up on my crease again so this way I know that this is going to be what the start of my fence and this is going to be the start of my pumpkins. If I really wanted to have the stems, I could draw my stems in like this. And I would just, when I take my scissors to go and cut the shape out, I then know to follow along the outside and draw that shape. So that's what I'm looking for. Take this time now and either do your own version of the Robin Mead where you're doing a landscape or you're creating your other landscape wise of this. I'll show you one more example as well. My last example is I had somebody ask if they could do SpongeBob or something completely different. So I offered, sure, how would you do it? And we found a picture and we said, all right, the background is going to be the ocean like this. The middle ground is going to be SpongeBob's house and the foreground in the front, right? Things that are large objects zoomed in is gonna be Patrick and SpongeBob. So what we did is we imaginary drew what the line would look like for their two characters. And then we imagined drawing the pineapple and going up those creases. So that way, when we cut out those shapes and then folded this back up, you would be able to see what you were thinking and how you were creating it. All right, so what we're going to do is try to take our large 12 by 18 paper and we're going to try to fold it into thirds. So what I want you to do is we're not going directly in the middle. What you're going to try to do is move your paper a little past the middle, okay? And then I want you to just fold this paper behind it. So that way it kind of looks like this crazy infinity loop right? So I'm looking for that and then you can crease it. So I'll show it to you again. We're just going to fold it a little like this, but I'm not pushing it down. I'm going to just gently grab it and push this one behind it. And now you can see it looks like this. So once you get it like this, what I want you to do is just crease those edges. So now you have a really cool fold 
that's in the style of an accordion. So it should, when you say you stand it up, it should look like the letter Z, as you can see here. Okay? So once you have that all done, I want you to then open it up, and you're going to notice there are two creases. There's a crease here and a crease here. So what we're going to start with first is using a pencil, I want you to draw your background design. So what's your first line for the background? And it could be anything, okay? So for mine here, I had my background of a different a night sky to my pumpkins and to my um, fence here. So for this one, if I was choosing to do something different, I could come up with something else. So let's see here. Something a little bit slightly different is I will have, you know, maybe I'll do that same thing of that curve that I had before. So I'm going to do a curve because this is my highest part, right? It's the tallest part. So I want to stay up at the top, okay? And then I'm going to draw a straight line down for, you know, this part here right on my bend, on my folded part. And then I want to create something for the background here. And maybe for this one, I'm going to do some crazy looking fun waves. Because maybe I'm inspired by the ocean on this one. So I'm going to draw some waves for this part here. And now notice how I have this is awfully close to this top part up here. So I'm going to have a lot inside my ocean. Kind of like a horizon line, right? So my horizon line's here, and then I'm going to have more of my uh, front stuff way down here. So I'm going to draw my line down, because I'm going to do a lot inside this ocean here. And then for this part, I think I'll just kind of do some waves, because it's another layer to the ocean floor, right? And I can always go back and finish that and edit this later. So I want you to take that time now to draw from your highest for your background, straight line down on the fold, draw your middle ground, straight line down on the fold, and then draw your foreground. Now that we have our picture drawn, I want you to take out your scissors and we're going to start with cutting at the lowest end first. So I want you to follow along your line and you're going to cut as best as you can for what you created. If you have it too hard or too difficult to cut some of your design, improvise. So just take some time and switch up as you're cutting it because we use pencil. So you can always erase any lines that you don't like or cut below that line. Um, I also recommend make sure that your paper is open all the way so you don't cut this on all three sides. And Remember, when you get to that first fold, you're going to go up along the fold of where you drew, or you can start, as you can see how I'm doing here, go from the top and go all the way down to cut off that first part. So take this time to go nice and slow and cut out each space that you have. So that way we have our uh, foreground, middle ground, and our background. Now that we have our project cut out, what I want you to do is very lightly with a pencil, just do a dot on the front of all three of your spaces. 
because you'll notice like as I'm opening it right here, sometimes when you go to draw, other things might be on the other side. Um, or not on the other side. What I meant is, is remember how we had it up in a Z formation? If I flipped it over, I might, like right now, the middle is not going to be working um, for me to be able, if I draw on that, then I won't see it when I close my kind of like card format. So once you've figured that out, I want you to take your time now to go through and use a black marker or a Sharpie, and I want you to design. Start with your foreground, make sure your project is open, and that you're working on the side that you had your dot. And this will allow you to create the design that you're looking for. As you're progressing and you're working on the middle ground, think about adding in all the details that you want to see above the foreground. And you can also hide some things in uh, behind the fence or whatever you have behind the foreground. So that way it's a three-dimensional object. As you're opening it and viewing it, when you walk around it, you can see. So take this time now to create your design.